It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. What a job. With £200 each. You with me? A classic car. Buckle up. And a gold to scar Britain for antiques. Oh, sorry. Ha <laughs> ha. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. <laughs> There'll be worthy winners. Yes. And valiant losers. So, will it be the high road to glory <laughs> or the slow road to disaster? Have a good trip. <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Say bonjour to Bucks in the company of seasoned <laughs> trippers James Braxton and Charlie Ross. I was born just down the road here. Really? Yeah. And when my mother gave birth to me, there was a band outside playing. So it's this where you get your musicality from. It must be. It must, it must be. Come wafting through the window. <laughs> that explains so much. Auctioneer and Anne Dram fan Charlie made some canny purchases on the last leg. I love it. I love it. I love it. He fared better than his fellow gaveler James after he bought one particularly questionable bit of art. Um, that's not good, oh. is it? Wasn't your finest hour yesterday, was it? I entered that auction room with some trepidation, knowing that my Achilles heel was hanging on the wall. For some, it was hideous. To me, it was an uncut jewel. A bit like their motor for this trip, a classic Alfa Romeo Spider. I like the way this car has a voice, this one, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Yeah. Every time you turn the wheel, yeah. it blows at you. Yeah, it has a sort of involuntary horn set. <laughs> you shouldn't hide. Despite his disappointing daub, James is still on the up, increasing his initial £200 to a modest £259.62, while Charlie has narrowly squeaked ahead, turning his £200 into £282.46p. Well, that's no lead. <laughs> it isn't, that's, really. That's just time in the barn. After kicking off from Chart Sutton in Kent, Charlie and James are motoring around the southeast, moseying up towards the Midlands and then heading west, before eventually making Dorset their destination and a D-Day in Dorchester. This time out, they'll be cruising to a Cotswold auction at Wooten Undridge. But they start off sharing a shop in Wendover. If I see something I want to buy, if you would prefer it, I would have absolutely no compunction in saying, James, après it. vous. Very gallant. Nestled at the foot of the Chiltern Hills, parts of Wendover were apparently a wedding present from Henry VIII to Anne Boleyn. Now, it's home to this antiques establishment. Marvellous. Excellent. Well done, sir. Beautiful driving, James. Thank you. Now, I wonder how long their gentlemanly conduct is going to last. Come on, James, after you. No, 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 after you. Age before beauty. Winners first. <laughs> they barely got through the door. <laughs> oh, good morning, sir. Oh, good morning. 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 Are you the boss? Morning. Yes, definitely the boss. Splendid. Yes. Uh, James. How do you do, James? Good to Pleased meet you. Pleased to meet you. Dave. 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 Hello, Dave. I'm Charlie. I'm heading that way. I, I'm heading this way. And they're off. There's lots of room to roam in here and some genuinely old stuff, too. Now, James, if you want to get ahead... That suit me. Some people just carry it off. Charlie? Oh, yes. Uh, let's get on with it, though, shall we? Oh, I like this. A lead mallet. I think that's probably a roofer's lead mallet. Roofing, churches and the like. Why the bamboo handle? If that was an elm or an ash handle, feel the jar, but a bamboo would just have a little bit of give in it which would make it much, much easier to use, softer on the hand. You're bashing your lead all the time, and I like it. The ticket price is £25. Already been reduced, though. And I think the handle's original. It's quite crude, but it's seen a lot of use. I think we'll go and call for Dave. Dave! He seems keen, certainly. I love this. I think it's super. I don't think it's a priceless antique, I have to say. Know. Well, it's £25, which isn't a lot of money. I see it's already come down. But, exactly. you know, I think that would make £15 to £20 at auction. It doesn't belong to you, does it? No, yeah, but I'm allowed to negotiate. 20 quid. I'm going to be really parsimonious about this. I, I think it will make 15 to 20 at auction. Well, the lowest I could go is 15 really. Small amount to pay, but the great thing is there's not a lot of downside. I can't lose more than £15. Pounds. Exactly. <laughs> Very good. I'll have it. Good man.
Good Top man. stuff, sir. Thank you very That's much. What we like. So, Charlie is now a man with a mallet. Any luck, James? I like this. Look. It says pastry board. This ain't no pastry board. It's the base of a Chinese table. <laughs> Tell us more. So this is Wang Wali. This is this rosewood sort of hardwood here. And then you've got this pink, pink marble stone here. And it would have had legs. You see the sockets for that. These things make quite good money now. Um, if you have the whole thing in its entirety. But obviously the base is missing and somebody very resourcefully has called it a pastry board. That's quite a pastry board. Better pass on that one, then. What else grabs you? Looking for something slightly out of place, something unusual. That's interesting. It's like ceramic. Early font fountain. Well, I think they're right with the fountain. We've got these lion masks here, and their mouths are open, so water could come out. What it feels like to me is architectural stoneware. Looks more like worse for wear. <laughs> it's really been bashed around. We've got remnants of some glue there. I don't know what's going on there. What have they got on it? They've got £75. If it had something, a mark of the Compton Pottery or Code Stone or something like that, um, I'd be all over it like a rash, but it's really badly damaged. Something I might buy at 35. I can chance my arm at 35, otherwise it's back on the shelf. Sounds like a plan. Now, Charlie's got his eye on something else. Love those Art Deco frames. They are so lovely, I love them. If they were silver, you know, they would be hundreds of pounds. But they're pewter, you know? How saleable are they? Let's get it out and have a closer look. Now, are they reproduction or are they Art Deco? They're Art Deco. Look at those oak backboards. Wonderful. Look at that sort of rigid lightning motif on the top there and these pure Deco panels, the angular panels. Art Deco, I love the Art Deco period, what I call the Charleston period. Pretty girls with champagne glasses, the old shape champagne glasses, dancing the Charleston. Do, 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 do. Uh-oh, he's off. Do, do, Those frames are priced up at £44 do, each, or 95 for all three. That's a good that? discount already. <sighs> but I was cruel like James Braxton. I'd offer a silly price for those but I'm not that nasty. Or am I? Dave! Go to your loins. You see these three deco oh, frames? Oh, yeah, they're nice. I mean, those, oh, yeah. well, they're wonderful. I yeah, thought for a moment they were silver. I almost... Yeah. <laughs> they, in some ways, are better. They, are, they don't dull off like silver. You don't have to keep cleaning them like you do silver. Yeah. They, they Less likely to be stolen. They're, exactly. They're <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Do you want to just ask? Yeah, I will, yeah. What are you thinking, though? I'd rather not say, because it would be rude. Right, I'll no. go and find out. Just go and see. Yeah. So, while Dave consults the dealer, James is planning his next move. James Braxton. There's a little chess set there which reminds me of my youth. I was given a portable chess set like that. Yeah. Which you can fold into a little box. I know, I know. It retained yeah. retained your position, didn't it? And I had such an interest in chess then. Yeah. I won a competition. No. I've got a book at home. Prep school chess champion or something. Excellent. It's all been downhill since then. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. You could have been the next Bobby Fisher. Ah, oh, Dave's back. The lowest she can yeah, afford yeah, to yes, go yes, is yeah. £25 each. I think they're fabulous. I'm going to have them. Oh, here we go. So, 75 for those, and with that lead hammer, you owe the man £90. Pounds. It's been an absolute pleasure. Grab and run. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. Thanks a lot. But James is yet to get off the blocks. He's still got his eye on that bit of a fountain. Now, Nick, I've spotted this. I'm just in two minds about it. It has suffered extraordinary damage. Well, it looks as though somebody's taken a sledgehammer to it. Now, £75. Best I can offer is 30 or 35 we're going to struggle with that because I've spoken to the lady previously about uh, this and um, 60 was the lowest she would ever come oh. down. Oh, well, maybe one day she'll get 60, Nick, but not from me. <laughs> All right, OK. <laughs> so while James heads off empty-handed, Charlie's taken our route towards Bletchley Park, where the Enigma Code was cracked in World War II. 
but he's here to discover how British code breakers also dramatically changed the course of the Great War. Michael? Hello. Charlie Hello. Ross, lovely to see and you. And you too. In the company of the grandson of heroic cracker Nigel de Grey. He was head of a group uh, which included bright people, intelligent people, yes. people with special brains who could yes. do decoding. Former publisher de Grey joined Naval Intelligence Division, Room 40, in early 1915. So was Room 40 here or in London? Or? Room 40 was at the Albertry. So how many people have we got working there? About ten, I think. Really? Yeah, that yeah. was all. But by the end of the war, that had been multiplied by ten and there were over a hundred. Room 40 and their War Office counterparts in MI1B were tasked with trying to decode enemy radio signals using codebooks seized from German vessels. Where were the codes going to? Through Sweden, Denmark. Yeah. Two neutral countries. Yeah. We'd cut all the other cables. They only had two running out of Germany, and this was one of them. The team, under director William Blinker Hall, had great success charting the movements of enemy vessels. These copies of Jane's fighting ships, complete with the crosses that indicate a ship sinking, offer a graphic reminder of the importance of good intelligence. Here we have a list of frequency of German uh, names yep. that are used. Started Alf yeah. down to Wagen 26. So someone's gone through all these things and listed these. Yes. I mean, painstaking, painstaking work. work. Hours and hours. Yes, absolutely. And then, you know, suddenly you hope that you have inspiration and you can suddenly say, ah, oh, <laughs> I see what. It. <laughs> yeah. Codebreaker Dilly Knox, who managed his best work in the bathtub, was just one of the more eccentric residents of Room 40. There was no qualification for doing it, it's just having the right sort of brain. So they and could they, have been mathematicians? They are mathematicians, there's certainly one member of the church. It was the brains they needed, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and it hadn't been done before, so there was no training. But for all their eccentricities, the code breakers played a decisive role when, in January 1917, Michael's grandfather intercepted a message from Germany to Mexico which was to help persuade the United States to join the Allies. When he'd partially decoded the telegram, he realised how important yes. it was. So he rushed to Blinker Hall, who was the boss, and said, Sir, sir, uh, is, do you want America to join the war? Yes, of course I do, my boy. Well, sir, I, th I think I might have something here that will help. The cable from Foreign Minister Zimmerman to his Mexican ambassador promised that the country would regain Texas, New Mexico and Arizona if they joined Germany in a war against the USA. I will read to you yep. from my grandfather's fair copy of the decoding of this telegram. It says, we intend to begin on the 1st of February unrestricted submarine warfare we make Mexico a proposal of an alliance on the following terms. Make war together, make peace together. And of course, the reason that they're doing that is they want to keep the Americans busy so that they don't join the war in Europe. No wonder America came into a war. Once the telegram was published, the US public's opposition to participation in the conflict was soon overcome and the country declared war on Germany in April 1917. And if I had been your grandfather, the war would have ended much quicker the wrong way. <laughs> well, because I would still be looking at these numbers, thinking, what on earth is this? Well, it's been absolutely fascinating. I'd like to thank you hugely. Now, what's the mood in the Alpha? Braxton is the name, bargains is the game in high spirits, I'd say, and James needs to be. He's drawn a blank so far. He's heading into Bedfordshire and Dunstable, paying a visit to Minucci's Antiques. Hello. Oh, hello, hi. James. Pleased to meet you, James. I'm Richard. Hello, Richard. <laughs> I'm Minucci. It's a good name, isn't it? It is, yes. Could be an antique shop, could be an ice cream parlour. Well, maybe you can get a double scoop in here, then. Something with extra sprinkles. <laughs> Pretty zany, isn't it? Nice bit of oak, tar top. It's quite different. It's structurally different. It looks quite strong. So that's been made sort of turn of the century. And I'm talking about the 1900s here. Uwe the Jesse J. Yes, don't forget about the price tag. 
Very discreet. One, three, five. Too much. That should be, you know, I should be picking up that for 50 or 60. And then I'm in with a chance. Well, don't worry, James. There's plenty more in here. Maybe Richard can help. Let's Rather have a look. impressive fellow here. What are we looking at? I like oh, the look this, of this. Here. OK. An old sea chest. It looks as though it's been around a bit, doesn't it? It's carrying it a has. couple of scars yes. here. It's not mahogany. I think it's a hardwood, and I think we should be smelling. We should, yes. Ah, oh, the Braxton yeah. sniff test. I'm getting right. camphor. A camphor, yes. Probably for linen, then. Keeps the moss away. Hey, I like this. What's this? US ship of the line Pennsylvania, 141 guns. It's got quite a nice shape to it. It goes up, doesn't yeah. it? Unusually. Do you know what they call that shape? Straight. Pylon. Like oh, a pylon. pylon. Okay. So Egyptians like these pylons. And we adapted it for electricity cables. Yes. Cool. Every day's a school day round here. I like that. What was the price? 110. Do you think we could do better than that, Chief? Oh, I think we could do something, certainly. What are we talking, 70? Uh, ooh, I don't know. I'll make a phone call and see what we can do, shall I? All so dovetail jointed as well. Stop talking it up, Richard. Get on the phone. <laughs> OK. Patience, James. Let's see what the dealer has to say. You have a, 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 a box, a trunk. You've got 110 on it, and uh, the gentleman's made an offer of £70. Can you do that? Yep, yeah, all right, I shall tell him. OK, thanks, Rob. What did he tell me to do, Richard? Leave the shop? He said, that's fine, you're OK. Wow, sold. Sold. Looks like the drought is over, then. Now the flood. Any moth, Richard? No, no, no moths here. So what have we got here? We've got a footstool. We have. And then uh, turn it over. Turn it over. You've got a lid there. Oh, Opens we got a up. lid. Oh yes. Can you got the, everything? All the extras. What are you calling this? A footstool? Yeah. You for need want to call of it, a better word. You need to call it an ottoman. And then you can charge James more for it. What can you do this for, Richard? Uh, Forty-five. What should we say? Thirty. I was just going to say 35. Go on, Rich, you can do better than that. 32. 32, go. go on, that, give that me meets a hand. somewhere in the middle. There we go. The deals are coming thick and fast now. Anything else in the vicinity? Keep I'm searching. Just sort of looking around. Keep searching. <laughs> looking don't, around. Don't around. let me stop you. What's that? That was to put your kettle on, wasn't it? It would have gone by the fire, yeah. You'd have had your kettle and the various things there. Quite fancy, isn't it? I just... don't think I've ever seen such a thick bit of brass in my life. The acid test to anything worth buying is weight, Richard. Look at that. <coughs> and the lift. Just straightening up. Lordy, mind your back, old bean. I tell you what, all these gym memberships, what a waste of time. Who needs it? That's good, isn't it? It is, actually, yeah. yeah. What is the price on that, actually? <laughs> going to sit down for a minute. What does that say? God, are you yeah. all right? The old ticker. £50. Pounds. Look at that. 50, but how much? 50? £50. Pounds. 35, really... Richard, come on. How about 40? 40. Oh, dear. 38. Go on. 38. I'll Come on, put it there. That's three large lumps for a combined total of £140. That's lovely. Thank, Thank you very you much, James. Much. And with that little spree over, time to get back on the open road. Have you noticed you've picked up a bit of countryside on your wing mirror? Looks like mint from here. I held it to my nose. I hope it's not no, a scene. I think it's nettle. <laughs> Dangerous business, this smell test. Nighty night. Next day, James is still taken with his latest trick of the trade. The Braxton lexicon of indicators has now gone up. I'm buying purely on sense of smell. Did the job, too. Yesterday, James acquired a smell-tested sea chest, an ottoman and a brass fire fender. He still has just shy of £120 to spend today. I bought three items, one of them an absolute Belter. No! No! Whilst Charlie also sniffed out a couple of goodies, acquiring a roofer's lead mallet and some Art Deco picture frames. The Charleston. Leaving him the little over £190 to play with. Well, I made a, a little inroad into my substantial profits. I just wonder whether I've paid a little too much money, but... Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Later, they'll be heading to auction at Wooten Underedge. But first, James is getting dropped off at Stoke Bruin on the bank of the Grand Union Canal. Right. Off you go, old chap. Off we go. Have a good trip. <laughs> I think he just did. Oh, dear. For goodness sake, I think, I think I've mastered it now, Charlie. Uh, well done. 
Bye -bye. Good time. Canals were the motorways of their day, allowing large quantities of goods to be transported across the country, with the Grand Union connecting London to Birmingham. James is meeting a local historian whose family worked on the canals, Lorna York. Hello, James. Hello, Lorna. Hello, Lorna. Lovely to meet you. I hear you're the first generation to live on land. I am, yes. My <laughs> father was the last one born on the boats. Really? Yeah, and we go back to the 1790s on the canal. The narrow boats hauled everything from raw materials to finished products and also provided a living space for the men who worked them and their families. You were allowed two adults and two children in this cabin but it would frequently have what they called a butty boat, which is an unpowered boat which they would tow. Yeah. And that cabin you could have another six children in. <laughs> because the boats were where the bargees lived as well as worked, they wanted to make them feel more homely, and so the art style that we still associate with canals was born. The women had come onto the canal more, and they liked to have some decoration. And this was the fashion at the time, so the boat people wanted that themselves. Known as Roses and Castles, after two of its most prominent motifs, the pretty floral designs were usually created in the boat's builder's yard by the men who constructed and painted these vessels. This is a style of Braunston dockyard just north of here. And like the, the ribbons, yes. eh? So this was for cups of tea? Yeah. And washing as well? Yeah, and cooking. Where would this be placed then? On the cabin top. On the cabin top? Yeah. So, yeah, it would be seen oh, by, yeah. by lots of people. But so, lots decoration. Of, yeah, they hadn't got any actual furniture, so they embellished everyday things like the water cans, the washing bowls, the doors, the cupboard doors, so that they had something that was pretty, that they yeah. could enjoy. Fashions in the outside world moved on, but because the narrowboat men were an isolated community, their traditional design continues to this day. How did they get on with the later sort of neoclassical and Art Nouveau periods? No, you didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that one. <laughs> this was still going. The museum also has a replica of a typical narrowboat interior, and R. James is keen to squeeze in and take a look. Mind your head. Goodness me, what a space. So four people potentially lived in it. Two adults and two children, yes. That would be the um, permitted amount. It is tiny, isn't it? Yes, but everything has got its place. So we've got the range. Yes, for cooking, uh, hot water, making the cups of tea. Yep. This would be your cupboard to store your crockery. And when you drop the cupboard door down, it becomes a table. This is your bed. That's our beds, is it? Right. <laughs> it would undo. Yeah. And that flap yeah. would come down. Yeah. And that would be the bed for the parents. It's a double bed, but it's only actually 37 inches wide. How long would it be? Were they... Well, it's just about six foot. Just six foot? Yeah. Most boatmen were yeah. not of a tall stature. Average height was about 5'3". Well, Lorna, given the fact that I'm well over six foot, I don't think the boating life is for me, is it? Not really, no. <laughs> Better stick to the antiques business, James. And look, here's a bit of a reminder. A boat called Charlie. I can't get away from the man. Now, where's the proper Charlie? He's steering the Spider southwest, and he's a little concerned about his rival. James is far too chipper today. He obviously had a good day buying. I just wish he'd buy a few more of those ghastly paintings. Charlie's making a beeline for Northamptonshire and Brackley, which was once one of Richard the Lionheart's official jousting sites. But with around 190 pounds in his pocket, what will Charlie tilt towards? Aha, that's a face I recognise. Jim, how are you? Hello, Charlie. Good morning. Good You're looking to see very you. flowery, very Caribbean. Make the most of it. This place is quite a size easy to get lost in here, perhaps a friendly local guide might help. I always like a recommendation, Jim. Well, that's a proper table. It's lovely, isn't it? That's George II. Pad foot. Lovely, lovely Honduras mahogany. Why am I building it up? It's unsaleable it today. No, it's Absolutely unsaleable. It, it's lovely. What we have to look for here is, are the leaves original to the top? They look as if they are, mm, don't they? They do. I'm going to look underneath it, because that's the key. Yes, always good to get under the bonnet. I've got an odd request. You haven't got a torch, have you? We have, yes, I'll get one. And as if by magic. Good Lord. 
That's amazing. <laughs> what do you think? I think the top is absolutely spot on. Got some new blocks under there. Yeah. So what? If I was a couple of hundred years old, I'd want some <laughs> new blocks, I should think. Lovely. 18th century heaven. I think it's a lovely table. Well, of course you would. You own it. <laughs> <laughs> right. It yours? It Down is. to the thorny oh. subject of money. Tell you what, this, is, this has got to be rudely cheap. I reckon at auction that would make something absolutely absurd, like 60 to 80 quid, which is a joke. Yes, it should be it worth is. 350 pounds, but it didn't. So 40 pounds would be a bargain. I'm probably going to be showing the door in a minute. I'm going to say something to you which you're not going to like. Would £30 show you a profit? I can see that Caribbean shirt twitching. <laughs> well, I want you to beat Jane. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, we will do a, do a deal at that. Are you honest? Yeah, yes. It's a wonderful... You know, even if the auctioneer gives it away, I love it. It's made me think of the good old days, Jim. Yes. Do you think we'll see them back? Don't know. Hope so. Yeah. I do, tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, fingers crossed, Charlie. It might be cheap, but it's still a gamble. God, you put a skip in me step. <laughs> but whilst Charlie heads off happy, James is about to get shopping. His last retail opportunity of the day is in the county town of Northamptonshire. He's got around £120 to splash about, and Edora Antiques gives him two floors crammed with goodies in which to do it. But is he feeling the pressure? This is a crucial stage for me. I'm in my third shop of my third leg. I bought three strong items already yesterday. Now, today, I want profit, profit and profit. Sounds like a firm of solicitors. <laughs> What's tickled his fancy there? Now, these are great fun. This is uh, figures after a very famous cartoonist called Norman Thelwell. And this one's entitled Kickstart. It's done by Bezik Pottery. Little pony club girls. Here's Penelope on her... Very reluctant Shetland pony. How much have we got on this? Sixty pounds. That's about the price of these things. I think there were four or five of these figures that were produced by Bessie. Very comical. But probably a bit of an also ran in terms of profit. Keep looking. Charlie, meanwhile, has arrived at the Oxfordshire town of Bicester. With just over £160 left, what can he find in here? Ian! Hi, Charlie. How are you? Good, how are you? Nice to see you. Have you got anything that might suit me, do you think? You might find a few bits. Do you make sure to look under everything? Look under everything? Bits everywhere. Let's have a look under everything, then. Right, viewers, what's in there? Oh, goody, I love a quiz. Yes, nothing at all. But what was in there? This is a music box. Well, this is the box for a music box, which is probably made in Switzerland. You can see a couple of grooves in here where the movement, which was a cylinder movement, there would be a lever which moved the cylinder so that you got a different configuration of pins so it played another tune. Unfortunately, all that is missing. It is just an empty box. And where's the fun in that? But he looks quite jolly. It's great, look at it. For the Toby jug, most Toby jugs are pottery, earthenware. It's actually silver plate. Got a bit of age, without a doubt. I don't think it's quite Victorian. I think it's probably Edwardian. Ian, yeah. talk to me about this. I've never seen anything quite like this. It's lovely, isn't it? Oh, no, I think it's ghastly. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I love it. <laughs> I love it, that sort of beaten effect. They've always got this rather standard face on them, Toby Jokes. All the teeth showing. How much is it? I'm looking 45. Are you? <laughs> I can't see 45 in but there. But I'm sure for you I can do something. I could I'm do 30. Here. How's that? Could you? Not 25. 28. <laughs> 28! <laughs> oh, uh, is that all right? That's absolutely right. Are you fine. sure? Yeah. Keep that safely. Will do. I need one more thing. So, while Charlie continues to peruse, is there anything to declare in Northampton? This is rather nice. What do they say? Silver gilt cufflinks. I like the price, 15 quid. So I think I can just about read those. Nine carat and silver. Cufflinks are always a good present. They're presents for weddings, presents for christenings. They've got a case that looks rather nice. And at 15 pounds, that's a purchase. Very decisive, James. Best to talk to the dealer. Sonia, I found something. 
Oh, what oh it didn't take me long. <laughs> I've got a little uh, pair of their silver gilt cufflinks. Mm. 15 squid. What could you do that for? Is there a little discount to help me along my way? I could do 12. 12? Mm. How about 10? About 11. Sonia is a fighter. I'll give you 12. I don't want to be mean. Thank you. 12. Thank you, Sonia. What else have you got? Have you got anything tucked behind there, Sonia? Something caught your eye, James? What's that picture? Reveal your goodies. They know you like your pictures. They don't always like him, though. OK. Clues in the place. Sandringham State. What have you got on that? Don't faint. It's 145. 145. Can we do a deal? Give me a price and I'll see if it's good enough. 50 quid. As it's you, go on. Really? 50 quid? OK, put it there. Thank you, Aranjit Sonny. Another lightning purchase. £62 altogether. <laughs> he thinks he's got something good there. Oh, why the long face? That is not good news. I got slightly overexcited in there. I looked at Farmville and the Sandringham Estate and I looked at the... Prince of Wales. So Prince Charles, I know he's a keen artist. I thought, oh, original watercolour, that's worth some money. It's a print. James, it's a print. Has no signatures whatsoever on it. God, when am I going to learn? I bought a picture in the last one. That made a tenner. This is likely to make another tenner. That's the quickest bit of buyer's remorse I've ever seen. <laughs> Back in Bicester, Charlie is being pointed towards a sizeable item. What about the big desk? What are this? Oh, it's beautiful, that. That's <laughs> ghastly. Got a fair amount of bling on it, certainly. Was 595, now 350. I mean, that is, you know, French ghastliness at its best. Well, actually, <laughs> of course, uh, the 18th century one would have been rather splendid, wouldn't it? Yeah. Who got me going here? I walked straight past that because I thought, this is just absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Nice bit of 18th century French furniture. The trouble is, Ian. <laughs> It's probably about ten years old. It's absolutely awful. Mm. I'm getting the impression he's not a fan. If I bought this, I'd be mad. How much is it? Go on, give me a death price. 150. Hang on. He's not thinking about it, is he? I'll be absolutely honest with you. I've got 134 pounds 46 pence left. If I gave you 134 pounds 46 pence, would you sell me your desk? You are now the proud owner. No! 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 <laughs> of a lovely French style <laughs> desk. <laughs> Good grief. We're all making dubious decisions today. There's no doubt that's the most ridiculous thing I have ever bought. It's a lot of desk for the money. Somebody might like it. Well, they might. So the desk and that Toby jug clean him out. I can Thank tell you, you that that is everything <laughs> I've got in the world. Lovely. Thank, Thank you very, you very much, much indeed. Charlie. Now, back together again. Are we ready for the auction? In boxing terms, the corner sponge has been applied, the bell is ringing, <laughs> and here comes the sledgehammer left. <laughs> then fighting words. But first, time for some shut-eye. Welcome to Wootton, a lovely market town nestled beneath a limestone cliff, which is why it's under edge. What a lovely day, isn't it? It's a day for profits, John. You think so? You're confident, aren't you? I, I am. I can feel profits. <laughs> I can feel profits, or it was that fried slice. So I'm not sure. <laughs> Charming. After kicking off in Wendover, Buckinghamshire, our two have wandered west to Wootton in the Cotswolds. Here to sell at Wootton auction rooms, complete with its own stained glass window and internet bidding. James parted with £202 on his five auction lots. Wow, sold! While Charlie blew his whole £282.46 and 46 pence on his five lots. But do they rate each other's items? This is absolutely beautiful, but it just shows you the state of the furniture market. £30 for something that would have been in an aristocrat's home or a very smart London home during the period of George II. He's bought this on weight. The gauge is extraordinary. The quality is magnificent, but sadly, who needs a fender nowadays? How many people have fireplaces in their houses other than James Braxton? But what's attracted the attention of auctioneer Philip Taubenheim? 
by pure chance, we've got a big collection of Toby jugs in today, 18th and 19th century ceramic Toby jugs. This, sadly, doesn't quite come into that range, but we will have Toby jug collectors in the room, so we've got hopes there. We've got a signed watercolour by Prince Charles in today, which we think will make a thousand. Sadly, this is not that. Uh, they have bought a, a print rather than a watercolour, which will make just maybe £20. The desk will either fly or it will floor. If Liberace were here, we'd have a really good chance of selling that desk. Sadly, he's no longer with us. They bought some quite quirky things amongst them, and actually, quirky works well at Wooden Underage. Oh, these two are all about novelty. We're very close to the action here. I can really taste the dust. Can you taste the dust? Mm. It's those rugs. I, I think I might recommend a Hoover. Uh, there's probably one in the sale. First up is Charlie's lead basher. It'd make a great gavel. 20 to start. 20. It's a £10 lot at 10 and money. Thank you, 15 and bid. And 20 on bid. And 25, will you? At 25, I'm bid biz there. At 25 pounds, I'm only bid. 25 pounds. What a splendid auctioneer. Not anywhere now. At 25 pounds, it goes. Congratulations, sir. I think you got away with that one. Yes, yeah, not a bad hammer price there. What's coming up next? I don't know. Something of value, hopefully. Well, it's James's right royal blunder. This could be the greatest mistake you've ever made in your life. It'd be very funny if I got a profit, because I don't deserve it. What do we say? £20 for it. Prince Charles worked for £20. £25 I'm bid, £30 I'm bid, at £30 I'm bid. On the wings there, at £30 I'm bid, £35, at £35. No mistake, we all considered it then at £35 and it sold. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been, congratulations. <laughs> I think we'll consider that a result, James. But you've got your quality items still to come. Oh, have you? <laughs> well, his cufflinks are rather nice. Go with the nails. Twenty pounds I bid, thank you. Twenty oh, twenty already. Twenty pounds I bid. Twenty five I bid. At twenty five I bid. At twenty five I bid. Thirty I bid. At thirty pounds I bid. At thirty pounds I bid. At thirty pounds. Not here, are they? At thirty pounds. Happy enough with that? Thirty pounds. The best we can manage at thirty. It's just about made up for the print. Not by a long chalk, but James is a trier. I have got to win this one to stay in the running, otherwise you're just going to coast home. <laughs> when have you ever known me coast home? Well, there was that one time with the elephant. His picture frames are next. At £30 on bid, 55 online. At 55 on bid, 55 on bid. At 55 on bid, 60 in the room on bid. At 60 on bid, 65 on bid. Online bid. At 65 on bid, 70 new buyer in. Come on. At £70 bid, 70 pounds on bid. Quite happy with that, no mistake. At £70 and they sell. At is the price. A small loss. Ah, but you did love them. Unlike some of your other lots. Can I withdraw the desk? No, you may not. Can I pull out now? No. Can I phone up the man in the shop and sell it back to him for 50 quid? Next is James's footstool, or Ottoman, if we're being posh. 30 if you like, at £30 for a low start. Oh, £30 30. With the rising lid, at £30 only bid, £30 Cost 40 £40 online. 45, 50 on bid, 55 on bid online again, 60 on bid, it climbs as you can see. 65 on bid, 70 on bid, at 75 on bid, at 75. A cheap thing for the money, at £75. Yeah, well done, well done. Well done. anywhere, <laughs> all done at £75. That's all right. Braxton! Back. If I may say so, One Braxton is back. Ottoman it is then. Well done, James. HRH print is now a distant memory. I've sponged. I've already forgotten about I've it. I've forgotten about it. Who is he? Now time for Charlie's Toby. That's a £20 lot at 20 a well, bid. Thank you at 20 a right. bid. Right. there at 20 pounds a bid. 25 I'm bid. Thank, Thank you. 25 I'm bid. Bid online at 25 I'm bid. 30 is back in the room. At 30 pounds I'm bid. At 30 pounds I'm bid. 30 pounds. 35 anywhere. At 30 pounds I'm bid. All done. You happy enough with that? At 30 pounds and it's sold at 30. 35 I'm bid. Oh, five. You're out in the room. Well done, sir. At 35 pounds a money bid. No mistake. 35 pounds is the price. Got my money back. With a wee bit for the coffers. You know, it reminded me slightly of you. <laughs> it was just... What's, what's it polite with? Portly? How, how rude. The sea chest now. Can James smell profit? 80 for the box. 50 for the box I'm bid. At 50 oh, pounds 50 I'm bid. Pounds. Good travelling box at 50 pounds I'm bid. 55 is that. Oh, 55 well. online. At 55 I'm bid. At 55. 60 on my book. At 60 I'm bid. At 60 pounds I'm bid. At 60 pounds. 65 I'm bid. Well at 65. Back in the room now. At 65 I'm bid. 70 I'm bid. 
I'm expecting it's 150, 200. 80, I'm bid. At 80 pounds, I'm bid. Letting it go through there. 80 pounds, pounds for Gilford. 80 is the price. You're OK, James. You're all right. You're just sort of washing I on, thought that you? was a biggie. Yeah, he'd pinned his hopes on that one. Sometimes I don't think people latch on to the story. They do not latch on. Charlie's bargain table. He loved it. Anyone else? Should be 100, but I'll start at... What should we start at? 50? 40 unbid, thank you. At 40 unbid, only at 40, I'm only bid. At 40 pounds unbid, 45. Thank you, madam, at 45. Oh, 50 unbid. This. At 50 unbid. At 50 pounds unbid. It's so right. cheap. Right. 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 At 50 pounds unbid. Anybody else joining in? At 50 pounds and it's sold. 50 is the price. Charlie, Charlie, don't load this one. <laughs> it's a profit. It is, but no return to the good old days. Don't take it personally. You are not responsible for the whole of the furniture market. I sometimes feel as if I am. <laughs> hey, big fender. Thirty pounds for it. Thirty pounds for the fire curve. Thirty pounds, I bid. Thank you. At Thirty. Got thirty. Got thirty. Right. I'm bid. Thirty. I'm bid. Thirty-five. I'm bid. Forty. Can you? Forty. I'm bid. Forty-five. I'm bid. Fifty. Will you? Fifty. I'm bid. It's quality. It is quality. Fifty pounds. I'm bid. Fifty-five. I'm bid. Sixty. I'm bid. Sixty-five. I'm bid. Keep going. This is the best one you'll ever see. I'm bid. 75, I'm bid. I'll never see a better Always. one. I've never no seen mistake a better one. 75 pounds, then. Got it so well. Seven. Braxton. Braxton. <laughs> see, wait. It's all about <laughs> weight, mate. All that rigorous testing finally paid off. Well, I think you've opened up clear water. No, I don't think so. You've got the desk. Passes the Braxton weight test, at least. I'm prepared to have a little wager for one pound yep. as to the hammer price. Well, I don't want to be rude. No, 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 no. I need to go 160. Higher or lower? Higher or lower? 80 pounds. I think Charlie's got the jitters. 100 pounds to start somebody, surely. Thank you. At 100, I'm bid. We're away. At 100 pounds, I'm bid. At 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. Oh, hang on. 160. James. James. 170. 180. Keep going, sir. 185. Yeah. Look at the quality of it. Oh. 185 pounds. All done. 190 online. Ooh, online, sir. 200, I'm bid. <laughs> the room bid's 200. 220, I'm bid. <gasps> oh, Mr. Braxton. And 240 anywhere. At 220 pounds. All done at 220. Found the hammer full. Well done, well done, well done, well done. Well done. The good old days are back. And with that hefty profit, their work here is done. Let's do the sums, shall we? There's a lot of sums, we I can't work it out at all. Leave it to me, Charlie. James began with £259.62. After auction costs, he made a profit of £39.90p, leaving him with £299.52 to spend next time. While well, Charlie started out with £282.46p. After costs, he made a profit of £45.54. So he slightly increases his lead with £328 exactly. Oh, the sun is still shining. I know, it's lovely, isn't it? On my life. It's all gone horribly wrong, right? <laughs>